Welcome to the Dark Shadows Podcast with your co-hosts Vicky Ray, Tom Diamond, and Keith Chowgo, bringing you all the odd goings on from Collinsport, Maine. Welcome to the Literary License Podcast, and today we're speaking to Adam Carlin. He is the son of the Emmy Award-winning John Carlin, as people from The Dark Shadows would know, played Willie Loomis, Carl Collins, William H. Loomis, and Desmond Collins, Alex Jenkins, and Kedrick Young, along with various other films and television performances. Adam is with us today. He's also a producer. Uh, he did um, Lights Out in 2010, and he's also has had his hand at acting with films as, such as diverse as 1993's Mr. Jones. He's done Freddy's Nightmares, one episode of that in 1988, and has also done Angels in 2000. So welcome, Adam. How are you? I said thank you very much. I'm good. Thank you. Great. And of course, with us, we have our normal co-host, which is Vicki Ray. Hello, Vicki. Hey, everybody. Tom Diamond. Hello, everybody. And Jesse Fultz. Hello, how's it going? So, Adam, I thought we'd start off today. Um, basically, we'll go into Dark Shadows, and we'll go into more of your father's career and um, various other things. So, basically, our listeners are probably more familiar with, well, your father's, you know, acting probably. Dark Shadows. Series, Dark Shadows and Kegney Lacey as well, because we need to mention that as yeah. well. Sure. Emmy winner. Emmy Award winner, too. So what are your early memories of your father when he was doing Dark Shadows? Because you were, you were basically being born as the show was starting to take wing. Exactly. I remember we, we always used to go to Jonathan Frid's house for, this is what a, a, a real memory of it. And uh, he had this beautiful penthouse and had purple curtains everywhere. And he, he was, I, I think he was trying to channel Bella Lugosi. <laughs> because uh, he 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 lived the vampire life. I mean, you just you felt like you were in a vampire's house, and uh, <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, when I went back to New York in my early twenties, I went to a club called the Red Zone, and it was the same place where they shot Dark Shadows, which yeah. is crazy. Which I didn't know till later when I found out it was fifty second and. 10th i think disco i'm not I sure think. of the streets disco. exactly yeah 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 it was it wasn't a disco then no it was disco was gone oh really i'm, I'm sad to say yeah no b no bgs it was all you know the new stuff i can't remember what oh, it was wow. even oh wow <laughs> I, I think i remember i think what they did later on and and i'm not sure but le magique comes to mind uh jonathan did a and i thought that was where the original uh studio or one of them because there were two studios actually uh they moved uh from the first one i think after a year to to bigger quarters and one of them became le magique which was a disco uh and jonathan uh, around 1978, when interest first started in the reruns, uh, Jonathan gave a uh, blood bank. Uh, it was in, in accordance with the New York City blood bank, so he gave a benefit, uh, and it was over there. But 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 getting back to you, uh, what yep. uh, what you know? What are your reminiscences? You used to go down to the studio, right? Yeah, I used to go down to the studio and I, I would see the trees and the forest and it even, it looked much faker in real life. <laughs> I know it didn't look that real <laughs> in real it life, much faker. but <laughs> no, uh, it, yeah, it was great. And I, and I remember my dad always, you know, holding my hand and people attacking him in the street. Willie, 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 as, a, as you know. <laughs> Three or four, crazy. I mean, yeah, he, 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 it was big, I'll tell you. It was how, a fan favorite. <laughs> how old were you? How old were you at the time? Oh, my gosh, probably 
four, five, wow. I guess. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I remember that, that. You know, he he would always sign the autographs and stuff, and it was very nice. What were you, what Cordial were your pepper. what were your reminiscences of some of the Dark Shadows co-stars? Uh, you were pretty young at the time. Oh gosh, all 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 good, all good. We uh, uh, had uh, dinner with Lar Parker. I I my dad actually did a. Charlie's Angels later, and I got to meet uh, Kate Jackson, mm-hmm. and uh, who was on the show, obviously. Sure, yeah. sure. I, that's I, I met, on, I met her. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, yeah, that's later on, exactly. Mm-hmm. But as as a young kid, I, I wasn't interacted that much with the the cast that I remember. I just met them later in life, mm-hmm. and uh, it was all it was all good. I just saw Chris. Hattie, on uh, some show the other day, yep. and they asked about John Carlin, and he he said the genius. So he was he was really sweet, really sweet. Did, and did, uh, I, I remember him, and, and David Selby is just the sweetest guy ever. Quentin. Yeah, Jimmy Storm is couldn't be there couldn't be a better guy in the world than Jimmy Storm either. You know, and and I do remember them he is a kid. Uh, you know, I, I got to know them from from traveling with my dad to the to Shadow Con and all that. Yeah, I was asking that your father, after Dark Shadows ended, did a lot of TV series and stuff. Were you ever able to go on any of those sets? Because I noticed that your father did Shazam, which I used to love when I was a kid. <laughs> Shazam, is that yeah. funny? I didn't go on the Shazam set. Uh, um, well, I went on one of the Charlie's Angels set. Um what a jeez! Did he so many? I mean, well, he, did, he? he did. I think. I think he missed. A, I don't think he missed too many '70s shows back in the day. He did them all. Yeah. Yeah. How, I remember. How, uh, yeah, being on sets all the time with him. Actually. How about you know, Cagney and Lacey? So, uh, Cagney and Lacey was shot on Lacey Street in downtown L.A. at a warehouse. Oh wow. And uh, yeah, and Tyne and, and Sharon, they couldn't have been two nicer ladies. So your father won an Emmy for his um, portrayal of Harvey Lacey. What was? Um, do you have any memories of what it, what your father felt when he won his Emmy? Because that's quite. Oh, a- he was he was he was so happy. You know, it was it, and going back to Brooklyn. And and seeing seeing his sisters and stuff, and they they were so proud of him. It was crazy, you know. That's his last line. My three sisters went to Brooklyn, lit a few candles at the Lady of Chesterhova, and it worked. You know, <laughs> and, you know, he loved his sisters, and uh, yeah. So when he went back to Brooklyn, he was he was he was quite the celebrity there. Everybody used to come and see him and. Yeah, it was great. It was great. He, you know, he just loved that part of it. it. Made him, you know, connect with people even more. Even though my dad pretty much connected with everybody, could be a little over the top sometimes. But uh, you know, I'm sure everybody on the show knows his uh, both sides of his personality. <laughs> he's, he, he's when he's at his best. There's nobody better. Generous, sweet, compassionate, great. And what's your earliest memory of um, your father and his work um, that you enjoyed? Um, um, oh, yeah, w- w- without a doubt, Dark Shadows. Yeah, I remember him coming home and, you know, I'd see the same clothes that he wore on the set. And he'd come home and it would be like it was it was strange to me as a young kid watching him and then seeing him in the same outfit come. Up, I would just recognize them in my head from the show. But um, yeah, just basic, mostly mostly walking on the street with him and him being, you know, approached by a lot of people, all all so friendly and nice, you know. I guess uh, Willie brought that out in people. <laughs> <laughs> he did a lot of um, theater performances. Were you able to see him do any of his the- theatrical performances? You know, I didn't. There's this this. If somebody, I know there is a film that exists of the first production of Prometheus ever done. And he did it at Stanford University. And I've tried to get in and I didn't try too hard, but I know there's a film that exists with him in Prometheus Bound. And it's supposedly, you know, Harold Gould played 
uh, the person speaking to him, and he, they, they built Mount Olympus on the stage, and he's chained up on this big, big thing. I wasn't born yet, and uh, oh, it, cool. it, it was supposedly, um, uh, yeah, uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. I got, I've always mean to go back. I, I gave a real lame attempt. I just talked, and so uh, I don't know what it would be, and I didn't dig in deep, but I know it exists. There is a tape somewhere in the archives there, of, or, or a film, probably, obviously, of uh, him doing that, which would be amazing to see because that would be him at his absolute prime. And, it, you know, he, get, he would get to use his voice. He quotes Oscar Werner, there's three things to an actor, voice, voice, and voice. <laughs> <laughs> which isn't true. <laughs> you you, you got to have a little more than that, but. You know, he was a big Shakespeare fan, my father. He would always be reciting it. That's interesting, especially in view of his friendship. Yeah, with huge Shakespeare. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, so he must have been able to relate. I always saw that he was able to lighten Jonathan up because, you know, Jonathan was a very serious uh, guy. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And he always made, and he always made, <laughs> and at the conventions, I, I mean, he Jonathan really loved him because you can see that he made he was able to get Jonathan was you know he's really more at ease uh, when uh, when your father was around and especially when they did all those little uh, skits where uh, there was one convention where uh, the, where they put where they put him in the with Jonathan in the coffin and uh, and Willie had and and and, and uh, your father had to open the coffin and uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if you were there for that one, uh, but uh, I think they. I almost... wasn't on set that day. No, no. Well, no. This was this was at the Dark Shadows convention. Uh, many years oh, later. Oh, oh no! I didn't. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't at that one. No. Yeah, they, yeah. They had a make. They 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 actually had a makeshift coffin, and they put you know they had a little curtains so that the fans wouldn't see it, and they put Jonathan, and they put Jonathan in the coffin, and and the two of them. Where uh, you know Willie's, op- you know your father's opening the coffin and then starts to crack up, and I don't know what the hell they were saying to each other, you know. And I think, oh, that's great. And, what, and, which one? Do you remember where that one was? What, uh, what city? That might have been one of the California conventions, I think, uh, and it's on YouTube. Uh, it would, it might, I think, it would have been in the nineties. Uh, but I, I think you know, and and, and Jonathan, and I think. Jonathan almost, uh, your father almost fell into the coffin, actually. Cause John- <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. That may have been, yeah, that's funny. I, I don't know how I miss, I always seem to go to all the ones in California. They, mm-hmm. Were they just in California, New York? I, I remember, I think there may have been one in San Diego. I there, don't know. Possibly. We went to the San Diego Zoo. I don't know. There was one, there were a couple in Kentucky, but actually. The- uh, because Roger Davis, oh, that's yeah, right. yeah, because Roger that's Davis, right, Roger, uh, yeah, had the uh, owned the hotel uh, there, and uh, the and and the fans were apparently there. There was an off group, an offshoot of fans that were looking, uh, and so he graciously donated that, and um, but it was basically yeah between L.A. the airport, uh, Newark. Uh, they had it at the newer gateway, the early ones, uh, and then after that at the Trade Center, the old Trade Center, uh, and then from there it switched to the Marriott in Brooklyn, and also at the um, uh, in Tarrytown, in Tarrytown, uh, the mansion that the wow Trade yeah, Center, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He always said he said he always said bit, one of the best meals he ever had in his life, Roger Davis cooked for him. Really? I can't believe that meal he cooked for me. And my dad, let me tell you, one thing that man had was a palate. He knew good food. That's that yeah. was a, uh, we really connected over that eating great food. And uh, yeah, Roger, he had he had that southern tough cooking. I guess you mm-hmm. know, he would always mention it when he'd see him. It's funny. And uh, yeah, yeah, he 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 seemed all the, all 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 of the characters he got along great with all the people Lar parker we had dinner with her in uh in new york um when one of the conventions was going on and she was so sweet yeah yep yep no 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 they they all were 
Go, go ahead, Keith. Because Katie and Lacey were um, quite popular, they did come back and do like three different TV movies. Um, did your father ever yes. mention how that was yes. to, come, to step back into a role after leaving? Oh yeah, I, I was I was with him. I was with him every time on those movies. We'd stay at the Park Meridian, and my dad and I, as great as our relationship was, it would uh, it would turn sometimes. And he locked me out of the the hotel room, and. I, you know, we were screaming at each other and he, he opened it for a second and then he slammed it and I kind of back kicked the door and blew it off the hinges oh my God. <laughs> and we laid down and we said something. He, I remember him calling up. He says, something's wrong with the door up here. Could you guys come and fix it? <laughs> the door's on the ground. It was, it was, it was a clean break. So they just fixed it. They were very nice and <laughs> it was it Typical was uh, it was funny, stuff. and then everything everything was fine right after that. Yeah, and and I remember that we had a view we had a view out of at the Park Meridian, and it was just right outside our window, about literally ten feet away, was just an old brownstone building, and we say it's the greatest view you ever had. Just a small alley, and and just to look at the brownstone. I said, this is better than looking at the park, uh, you know, from the from the plaza at the, at the penthouse. It was just it was such a beautiful, mellow New York feel just looking at that old brownstone building. So he, he really he, he loved New York. He, he appreciated it so much. Great times there. And you were actually born uh, after your grand. Your, you have your grandfather's name, right? Cause yes, your gran- your my grandfather's name, yeah, who I, I am- never met. He he died, died. Yeah, he died uh, before I was born. I never met him. Mm. He he looks like he looks like. I have a picture of him and my cousin Joe, who is passed, and yeah. uh, he um, he he looks exactly. If you made a, a, if you put Popeye into a real person, you look like Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. I mean, you look at the picture and it's just insane. He looks, he looks like a cross between Popeye and 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 Pope John Paul, <laughs> <laughs> but mostly Popeye. It just this tough, gruff look to him. You know, it's quite the description. Great. My dad, my dad. He's my dad said if he had, my dad said if he had two dollars. If his dad had two dollars, he didn't give him half. He gave him the whole two dollars all the time. Wow! So he was a very generous man, which I guess where my dad got it from. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. well you went into acting yourself. Um, was your father supportive of you going into acting? Because it is a hard. Um, yeah, career. it 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 was it wasn't my fr- it wasn't my first choice. I was uh, playing baseball at the time and doing very, very well, was going to most likely do something. And uh, I snapped my ankle and, you know, I ended up going to Pepperdine. And then, yeah, and then I, you know, I just kind of phased into it because I always read lines with my dad. And, uh, you know, I got a couple really good trips out of it. I got three months in Lithuania, which was absolutely amazing, which, which then got me to London. Actually, it was the second time I was in London, but hanging out with some of the greatest, you know, the, the, the guy, the, the stunt man was an amazing guy. I would love to find him again. We got numbers, and you know how you lose things. And, yeah. And you, were telling us, yeah. you were telling us about that before um, we started. Now, this stunt, uh, this was Schwarzenegger's stunt man or something? Stunt double. Schwar- Schwarzenegger's stunt man, yeah. Stunt double for years, mm-hmm. years, yeah. And he was he was working on the show was you know one of the, he was I remember he was fifty two at the time because he just had a baby girl and it was he says it, it was beyond the light of his life he said he felt like his sure. his whole life was sure. was beginning again yeah it was he was sure. such what a great great dude great dude I, want to ask I mean you everybody about, I mean all the English yeah go on go on go ahead go ahead go ahead. No, no, no. So I was just saying all the English people on the show. It was basically all English people. And the producer was the same guy that produced Enter the Dragon. Which oh, okay. was funny. <laughs> yeah. You also did um, an episode and, of um, Nightmares. What was that like? 
Yeah, no kidding. Because that was, was that it, it was fun. It was the it, and I I actually I actually Brad Pitt <laughs> had just come in before me and he he did the next episode. His career ended up a little bit better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> but I remember meeting him for a second. We talked. He was in makeup or dressing or something. He was he was a real what a good dude. What a good dude. Because uh, they they used to film those, but very uh, yeah, it was it was great. Quick fix. Yeah, exactly. It uh, yeah, it took him years after that to I think to become big. He he really put in the time. I think Dallas sleeping with Priscilla Presley on Dallas might have helped a little bit there as well. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true, that's true, that's true. <laughs> I want to take you yeah. back to Dark Dark Shadows for a minute again. Uh, do you rem- uh, do you recall? Yeah. Uh, I want to go over some of the couple of the stars who are no longer with us because that's obviously more poignant. And unfortunately, we're not able to interview them unless we have a seance. And even then, uh, I, I don't I don't think that would work. But uh, Thayer David, do you remember uh, Do you remember him at all from the show? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember Thayer definitely, definitely. What he he. He had that same great stoic quality as a person. He was almost, I, I, he, he, well, you guys know, I mean, you, you can't even explain him. Just in Rocky, how great was he in, in Rocky? I yeah. mean, he just, he just created that whole scene in Rocky. It was fantastic. And uh, very, much, very, very low-key and really calm, nice guy. That guy, great, great dude. Yeah. Wow. And um, yeah. let's see. Do you remember Jason Pat? Uh, Jason uh, Dennis Patrick at all? I don't Dennis know. Patrick. Oh gosh, Dennis Patrick. What a what a sweetheart. Total, just great. I can't tell you how good Dennis Patrick was. Gosh, yeah. I mean, I actually remember him from New York, and uh, yeah, he was he played with me when I was a kid, and and uh, yeah, I remember him quite well actually dennis patrick rocky graziano uh, champ, uh, boxing champ middleweight champion of the world mm-hmm. it, me my dad and him hung out one day that's why i got such oh, wow. a good memory of dennis yeah yeah graziano was our neighbor and uh Interesting. He, oh, cool. i i he, i think yeah it was great he was still and my he, he comes up. I remember this. They Paul Newman did the movie about him. Someone up there likes me, right? Yes. And, and yes. Rocky comes up and he says, uh, he says, what did you think of my movie? The movie about me? Yeah, you know, my dad, you know, basically said it was okay and a kind of a, I don't want to say sarcastic, but maybe a little sarcastic. Right? He says, you you just pissed. You didn't play it. I said maybe, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, yeah. My he, he he he. You know, I guess he got tons of accolades at the American Academy. They they knew he was really good. What was it? He uh, Mio Mio in uh, Tercet. Mm-hmm. Um, with Miriamne. That was his one of his favorite plays, and he did that at the Academy in some small theater. I remember he showed me the theater and it was right near the old homestead steakhouse wow. in like 22nd street or something. Yeah. It was just office place. building. I remember that place. Yeah. 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 yeah that's and, just... um, yeah. What about it's, 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 right. look, 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 if you guys look up winter set and look at the, the long, um, the, the long solo performance of, of, uh, Gosh, I can't even think of the character Mio, and uh, it's great. It's such. It's really great writing. Really great writing. Almost Shakespearean in a way. Were, were you ever on the yeah, set? Yeah, were, were, yeah. Were you ever on the set? Whether when there were any bloopers or anything that actually happened? Were you on the set during the? You table? know, you know. Yeah, that, that's funny. I forgot to bring. I remember seeing the bat, the, the notorious <laughs> bat, hanging from a white string. I'm like, hey. <laughs> It, even to me as a kid, it looked so silly. And somehow on set, even though you saw the string, it still worked. I don't know. I mean, you got to give Dan 
Curtis a lot of credit for making that show work like it did because you still watch it and it still is has that haunting feel to it. It's really something else. Yeah, the, the, the bat, the bat, and the and the and the fake pine trees. <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead, Keith. So um, <laughs> I've really got nothing. <laughs> I'll take over if you want. Yeah, you take over. Sorry. Oh, are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. Um, So, um, what? Okay. So, what about uh, Joan Bennett? What are your uh, recollections regarding Joan Bennett? Oh gosh, I I remember seeing her in old movies as a young kid, and then you know, my dad and I always used to watch old movies. You got to say Wuthering Heights is quite possibly the greatest movie of all time. I'm so, people think it's melodramatic and over the top. I the thought it was great. Merle Oberon? But I, she wasn't, she wasn't it. Merle Oberon, exactly. Yeah, yeah they I tried to remake it a hundred times. Oh my God, I love that movie. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. And, uh, but I remember seeing that movie and then seeing Joan Bennett. I don't remember the movie as a young girl, you know, she was so pretty. And then meeting her as an older, you know, classy lady, you know, very, yeah, yeah, I, you know, she, she was, she was something else. She was a real stoic movie star, kind of dead. She had a presence <laughs> about her, that's for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Jesse, Vicky, do you have any questions for him? No, you all seem to be fielding it. I'm just here to be decorative. No, you no, 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 no. You open your mouth. Come on. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you you'd already took my question about Joan Bennett. and Because I, I, I know she was a 20 screen star as well, wasn't she? She did silent movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she, she'd done. I yeah. mean, I can just see her face right now. She had a little scandal. The TV. Yeah, had my, a little da- my dad always used to play her old movies. Yeah, so she, had, she led an interesting life. Um, actually a fascinating life. Some of her scandals were legendary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know him, but that's interesting. I'm going to look him up. Yeah, there's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> she was a beautiful It's woman. funny. I just saw a, I saw a, uh, um, a documentary. My dad was, a, you know, a, a big Polish patriot type of guy. He had Rembrandt's Polish writer on my on my wall with a picture of the Pope right next to it and I'm watching this documentary and it's on this sculptor named Shapolsky and they say everybody says he was by far the greatest sculptor that ever lived unknown almost because all of his stuff was blown up in the war in Germany and I look to see you know at the end I see producer Leonardo DiCaprio dad and they show pictures of him and uh yeah of, of leonardo dicaprio with this guy you gotta watch the documentary it's crazy what's it called it's, again? i think it's just called i think it's called shapolsky just you know look up the great uh polish uh sculptor and uh yeah it shows it shows the uh, dicaprio with um um is it, with him, you know, and, and Shapolsky's playing with him. And he lived literally in the same, right on the same street that my dad did before he passed. And if my dad would have met him, wow, that would have been a great meeting. He would have beyond appreciated that. I told him about it. It was right before he was passing and he was so interested. He couldn't believe he never heard of the guy. And uh, yeah, look up some of his sculptures and there was four, like three story sculptures he did in, in Germany that they think the Germans have somewhere still because they, they knew they'd be worth something or whatever. And they blew a lot of them up too by, by accident when you drop a bomb and blows up yeah. things that you don't want to. Sure. But sure. yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a real interesting um, uh, documentary on this guy. He was very, very cocky in a very mellow way. He knew he was the best. And, uh, yeah, funny. And, and DiCaprio's pop used to come into our, our restaurant all the time. My stepdad, Antonio, uh, we, we had, we owned a, 
father and uh, DiCaprio's dad always used to come in. So he was, he was, I think they were in Silver Lake or something. But uh, I don't know how I got off into that. Oh, because of the Polish sculpture. Yeah, sculptor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Keith? So, um, I'm just trying to figure out um, what we can There's ask only that. so many okay. questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because we like, I mean, uh, were talking about your career. Right. Different because like oh, hey, there's not much to yeah. talk about. How about <laughs> when you used to go up with your pop to the mo to the movie sets when the movies were being done for Dark Shadows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he did. Uh, oh, oh no, the the Dark Shadow movie sets up there. Uh -huh. I did go once up there, and you know whatever building or or house they use in that area, it was. Uh, you remember the scene where the House crashes on him. The glass. Yeah. There's a scene yes. where he's riding a bike and he crashes. It all falls on him. I remember seeing that it's greenhouse and him setting it up. How the glass was yeah. falling, and he was on a bike. And my dad, my dad had to learn how to ride a bike for that scene. <laughs> he could. My dad never drove. My he never drove a car until he was 33. Really? Wow. I don't yeah, think so. Bad. He couldn't drive. He had to learn how to drive. Yeah, I mean, what, that's, was that's he, was real. He, he, we must he, have been he, New Yorker then. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. True New Yorker. Sure, sure. And came from yeah. Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. Also. Listen how, I, he, yeah, he's from Brooklyn. Listen how isolated you become. His sister worked on 37th and 8th Avenue in the Garment District, 8th or 9th Avenue. And she had in, in she had worked there over over 30 years and had never been to Central Park. Literally oh 15 God, blocks up the street. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Here's a great moment. When we went to do the movie in, for Cagney and Lacey, he took his sister on a, on a, on a horse ride in the carriage. And I've never, I mean, she smiled like I've never, she had never seen Central Park in her life. Really? Impossible. Wow. wow. And we took her for a ride and Aunt, Aunt Tilly was the, the, the best. The best. <laughs> and uh she 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 was definitely an angel, at least to me. And you know what sure. no, my dad loved her beyond imagination. So how many Vicky and Mary yeah. were Yeah. He had three sisters, yeah. Vicky and Mary were a little bit tougher. <laughs> but great too. And they were the nuns? Vicky and Mary? No, no, no. Not, none of them were nuns. My, my <laughs> Tilly used to oh, I thought they eat, were. Make, make dinner for, for the nuns. No, they lit <laughs> candles at the Lady of Chestova. Oh, I see. <laughs> they, they I thought they nuns. were nuns. <laughs> yeah. No, especially, let me tell you, Vicky and Mary were far from nuns. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tilly was a nun. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little more about and, that? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh man, but she she used to feed the poor, the nuns, everything. Her whole last part of her life was was doing that. And she told me that she knew that she should never have a kid. But she used to ride the bus into New York all the time, and all her friends used to say, "How can you not have a child? You're 29 years old. It doesn't make any sense." And <laughs> She got drunk that night and was with Uncle Joe, and they had Big Joe, <laughs> six foot eight. <laughs> Kindest guy of all time. Yeah. And, and she used to follow him to school, hiding behind trees. He used to tell me, he used to see her hiding. He's, Mom, what are you doing? Leave me alone, please. <laughs> Yeah, Joe, like Joe some and family. Somehow. I tell you, some family. My oh. my own my, my own personal recollection of your father when I met him at uh, Dark Shadows Con in Los Angeles in 1984, and he was at the bar, uh, you know, sufficiently uh, getting ready uh, for it. And um, I, I walked up to him and I said, "Mr. Carlin, uh, my name is uh, Tom Diamond." Blah blah blah. Uh, anyway, he says, to, and he looks at me, he puts his arm around me, and he said, Tom, where do you come from? And I go, well, I was born in Brooklyn. <laughs> I, I, we, I was born in Brooklyn, too. 
we have to stick together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he my dad ne my dad never left brooklyn you know yeah. he never left brooklyn his whole you know it, it was it was who he was you know the the tough parts of the, he told me that they used to wrap newspaper and rubber bands his sisters around his feet to go to school with an old shoe sole, a bottom of a shoe sole, and then they would tie. And I go, and it, it sounded so not real. I'm like, I go, why would he make that up and just say that? And then I asked all three of his sisters. They go, absolutely, we did it all the time. It's so a newspaper a and rubber bands around around a, a sole. Uh, you know, at least he had the bottom part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these these his soles were protected. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's very important. Yeah. As I said, he said, Oh, we had a soul. He just told me about the rubber bands in the newspaper. You know, we always had a piece of rubber to put under his foot. Does That's your, um, because but, um, um, your grandparents were, um, what, first generation to America? Or, or were they actually um, your grandparents? He, yeah. My, my, my grandfather came from Poland and Germany. And uh, I think he came from Germany here. He, he somehow got into Germany and there's a picture of him with 50 kids in a picture. Everybody's head is shaved and there are these two, you know, very stoic, <laughs> uh, strict looking teachers with kind of like top black top hats on. And he's the only kid with long, long hair. It's craziest picture you've ever seen. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. He, and it's long. I mean, way, but, you know, three inches past his ears and everybody else's head is shaved. He must have come right from Poland and didn't get the haircut yet, I imagine. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what well, that, for, <laughs> My dad didn't know this. Kind of. Well, so that means that for your father, um, normally, like, what well, immigrants, um, when they come to America, they want their children to be doctors and lawyers and right so how did they react to your father wanting to be an actor it must have kind of like thrown them slightly good question no um, not at all he he went into the air force at 16 years old he had to get signed off he was just about to turn 17 you know and he said it was the great one of the you know he went to korea japan and and uh then he got stationed they were going to station him in Arkansas and the guy, the captain or whoever it was that did the stationing happened to be from Brooklyn. And he says, you, uh, John looks like they got you in Arkansas. And he goes, Oh no. And he says, would you, would you appreciate long beach better California? And he says, Oh my God. And he said, he got to long beach. He thought he was in heaven. Imagine long beach and whatever it was 53. I, I don't know what year it was. He was 18, 18 years old, and um, he got stationed in Long Beach. I'm not sure if his his tours were in Korea and Japan were after or before that. I think I think it was after, and he was in Long Beach, and then he he was a policeman in San Francisco, which he said he really loved. Wow, interesting. Also, so so that that and then he came back. One of his best friends from Brooklyn. Um got him a job in a toy manufacturing shop where he would put the toy on a conveyor belt mm -hmm. and then it would just keep going. And he said he lasted 15 minutes. And, and he said, you know, he'd already seen Marlon Brando perform and he, he thought he could do that stuff. And uh, his, his girlfriend at the time paid $700 for him, I remember her name, Marianne Nazanrich, went, uh, gave him $700 to go to the Academy. Wow. And, Academy and of that's how arts. it all started. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he was a cop then? And, Your um, father was a cop? Where, where my mom, where my mom ironically teaches today in LA. She's the number one teacher in Los Angeles Good for her. third year at Good the American her. Academy for the past 30 years. Yeah. It's, it's great. Good for her. And funny enough, she became incredible friends with Jack Albertson's ex-wife, who who just recently passed in her late 90s. 
and that's who played my dad's dad uh, in Subject Was Roses. Okay. Wow. And, Do, your father was a cop. I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was. He, he was a you know military policeman in in San Francisco. Yeah. You know, he was stationed there as a policeman. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. No, yeah. Your father did a lot, and I do want to tell the fans that uh, we had scheduled, and we were working with Adam um, to schedule an interview with uh, John, who was coming, who was getting better. Uh, he had, of course, been severely incapacitated, and uh, John was getting better, and he actually had consented to the interview. And then, unfortunately, uh, this turn of events happened, and uh, but. But fortunately for us, Adam uh, graciously consented uh, and uh, to talk to us. Uh, the um, Adam, um, what are you? You know, you, yeah, about you, the, about his fan. I mean, his you, you guys are amazing. His, his fans, he, he truly appreciated. Uh, one of the ladies always used to send him. Lee McGinty, she she's in still um, Pennsylvania. And she always used to send him Polish hams from from the butchers there and <laughs> steaks and stuff. So I love it. She she was really great. Yeah, yeah. She was good food. Oh, you talk, you're it. talking about Mad Marie. She's Mad Marie on uh, yeah, Mad, Mad, Mad Marie. Marie. Mad Marie. <laughs> Marie McGinty. Very sweet gal. Very sweet gal. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, I, and I'm glad yeah. you brought her up because I want to thank her for being the go between uh, initially. Uh, between you know, getting to you and getting to John and the, and caretaker Tammy, and uh, the whole bit. She was uh, and, and you know, so I want to give her credit where credit is due as well. Um, oh yeah, yeah, she's she's been great. She's been there the whole time, and she she got a little bit of my dad's wrath once, I think, which it, it it's it's never anything personal. He just you know, if he doesn't feel like get get him to get him to book out. He made a fuck alone, you know, and then the next minute it'll be the most cordial, kind person of all time. You know, he, well, he, he really was a man of extremes, that's for sure. Well, I'll never forget when I first met him and I had a civil service job and I told him what I did and he said, do better. <laughs> 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 he looked at me. Like, yeah, no he, 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 he would he would say things off the cuff. Here, here, I'll give you I'll give you a good. Uh, this is how my dad could be. We had seen a movie, and we're walking out of a the movie theater in downtown L.A. And this little lady dressed like a nurse. I mean, she was a nurse, and um, she says, "Excuse me, gentlemen." And my dad goes. Not today, not today. And I was so embarrassed. I go, oh my God. So I stopped to talk to her and she was, I, and I, I used to volunteer at the children's hospital. Mm -hmm. So I, it was St. Jude's and, you know, she was getting donations. And so <clears throat> I gave her 20 bucks and apologized profusely. My dad had it one way and then he comes back. I didn't even see him and he comes back and he profusely apologizes and then the lady recognizes him and just falls into his arms and gives, and he gives her a big hug. He says, "What a lady you are!" And he, he gives her he gives her two hundred bucks and he says, "I I am so sorry for the way I reacted." She goes, "I understand that I want to be, you know." So he, first reaction can be not right, <laughs> but then you know he'll he'll ninety nine percent of the time make up for it. Well, I do have to say, as a postscript to my story, was that 25 years later, when I ran into him at the convention again, and uh, so I said, well, John, I did do better. And, he, and I told him, and he, and he said to me, I said that to you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I say he, that to you? you? Know, it's perfect. Oh, exactly. You know, and you bring him up to, when you say that he did something wrong or bad and he hears that he can't, he goes, I, I can't believe it. I, you know, he, yeah, my, yeah. I'll tell you, my dad never had an agenda or a plan past the moment, I which I, I believe it. Is, 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 it's a great way to live, but it's not practical, obviously, but he never had an agenda, never planned anything out, you know, uh, all through the things we never owned a house, a car, anything you know 
we all just had a, a good time for the moment. And, uh, you know, I remember walking in to uh, Nikki Blair's was the last of the Mohicans of the real Hollywood restaurants. And he's sitting with Mickey Mantle and Mike Tyson. Wow. <laughs> like, oh my, and me being a baseball player. I mean, Mike Tyson was, I mean, also my hero, sure. but Mickey Mantle, my God, Mickey Mantle. And uh, I, I think he had the fastest time to first base ever. It was like 3.142. Mm-hmm. And I said, I've been trying to break that record and get time that I was, you know, literally two ticks off of it. And I said, I can't get below it, Mickey. He said, well, if you're even close to that, you're damn fast because I was fast, kid. <laughs> he, he even had dinner with Frank Sinatra. You were telling me that story once. Uh, where you oh, were yeah. Him. Oh, no, this is fun. Tell well, us, he, well, he stayed Sinatra. in Frank Sinatra's house. Well, this is funny. He's, he's <laughs> we're at uh, Mateo's old school Italian restaurant where everybody used to go. Now Sinatra is sitting across the restaurant and he's telling me, me and Jimmy Luisi, it was just the three of us. And he said, ah, oh, there's Frank. He says, you know, you know, he, he, he let him stay in his house and everything, but this is a hundred years ago. He goes up <laughs> and says, he says, well, say hi to him. You know, Jimmy's giving him a little, and he goes up to he's a Mr. Sinatra. He says, I want to thank you for letting me stay in your house. And, you know, very, you know, you Frank Sinatra, my God, very much like my dad, too, as far as tipping goes, <laughs> tipping everybody a hundred dollar bill everywhere he goes. Wow. And uh, he explains he explains the uh, the situation years ago. And Frank Sinatra shrugs, shrugs his shoulders and says, I don't know who you are. <laughs> And then somebody explained who he was, and and because uh, they they all the waiters knew my dad at the restaurant, and when he just walked by, he was being he he had to be helped walking at the time, and he as he left, he put his hand on my dad's shoulder as he walked by. <laughs> I don't know what it meant, like I'm sorry for you, or I remember you. I, I'm not quite sure, <laughs> but it was funny. He didn't he couldn't remember him at that moment. You know, he was he was he was yeah. going at the time. What are your recollections about Nancy Barrett uh, on Dark Shadows? Uh, do you, do you, uh, you know, I've only met Nancy a couple times and uh, loved her character, but um, I, I didn't know her very well. Didn't know her that well. Mm-hmm. And Alexandra Mulkey. Yeah. I, Ale- and Alexandra Mulkey, who played Vicky. Uh, oh, Vicky. yeah. She was, she was, I, I remember having a crush on her at about, you know, five years old. <laughs> I remember wow. thinking how beautiful she was. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's but you know, she I just remember being very sweet and calm. I'd be meeting her and uh yeah. I, I, I she did she wasn't you know, they shot a a little movie thing here at Tammy's. I don't have you guys seen it? I haven't seen Mm-mm. it yet. Mm-mm. Tammy, what was it about? What was the scene about? It was with Chris Pentock and your it, dad. It was with Chris Pennock and my dad. Do you guys know about this? No. no. Oh, it was they this the one like where, where he re- played a vampire or something like that, where Chris Pennock played a vampire? Uh, a black yes. and white thing? Yes. Yeah, a black and Chris- white thing? Interviewing for a job. Interviewing for a job. Yeah, yeah. I think that's on. And by the way, I didn't know Tammy was present. Uh, everybody, this was Tammy. Yeah. Say hi, Tammy. Uh, oh hi! I'm just yeah. here for a technical support. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> the... You surprised all of us. <laughs> you surprised all of us. You were the, the camera. You were the X factor in the. Well, Tammy, <laughs> he was the X factor. Tammy, oh, she, she, she hi, don't... Guys. Oh, hey, hey, Tammy. Tammy was John's caretaker uh, through through the whole thing. Tammy, what are your recollections of John? Let's 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 get a spot question from you on that, if that's okay with you, Keith. Is that okay with oh, you? Yeah. Okay, good. Hey. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, well, well, go ahead. Well, I was just, I was just saying to Adam this morning uh, how much I miss him. You know, we were just we just miss him. He was, uh, and how much he just lived in the moment. 
You know, if he, we were talking about, you know, if his dad wanted something, he'd give you a thousand dollars for it. It didn't matter. He wanted what he wanted and, uh, made sure you had one too. Oh, and, um, no. yeah, I miss him. I mean, I got to know him. He spent most of his days watching old movies. He loved to see Joan Bennett in her movies and, uh, Eating good food. He was very happy and content. Every now and then he got a little, she could run on the beach or something, throw a football. But, uh, and music. Oh, we played a lot of music, a lot of Judy Garland, a lot of um, Billy Holiday, Frank Sinatra. Chopin. Chopin. <laughs> he loved his music. He would just. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he would be so into the songs, he would he would almost cry. Like, he would just, like, it would just get to his soul. He was so expressive with that. I mean, he truly loved music and good movies. And, and the expression he had with them, enjoying them. He could truly enjoy them. Like, like a good meal. Like, I'd bring him some, he'd go... That was the best hot dog I had ever. <laughs> it was always the best meal ever. <laughs> when he liked something, he liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, he enjoyed and, life. Uh, he enjoyed life. He did. He did. Yeah, and I was saying, Jimmy Storm. Oh, you can't you can't find a better guy than that, except uh, equal David Selby. Nice, but. Man. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, J Jimmy. Jimmy was oh, he he came to visit him at the end a lot. Yeah, with his wife, nice his man. lovely we, wife, and uh, yeah, they 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 were they they couldn't have been they, any they sweeter played or, or more. Yeah, yeah. They're very nice. Yeah, they they they. they, they, they play, yeah. Oh, there's yeah, yeah. Much later. Yeah, on, Jimmy. They Jimmy opposite. is. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, he loved Jimmy Storm. Oh. Oh, he loved Jimmy. He really, I mean, he, he and, you know, I talked to him. He, he loved Jimmy. He really loved Jimmy. He loved to see David Selby, too, come yeah. around. He'd yeah. come say hi. He'd get excited to say hi to him. And Laura Parker. I mean, they yes. all really kept in touch. Such a family, you know. They were a true family. Well, I understand. They really looked out for each other. Well, I we understand. all felt really bad when we heard about your dad dying. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Really, really. It, it, yeah, it, it was it, it was obviously tough, but you know he was almost eighty seven, so next week. Yeah, it'll be next okay. week. So yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, I guess wow. eighty six and a half. And uh, I mean, I can't believe he made it that long. And the good great thing is, even though he was bedridden, and you know we could get him up and walk once in a while. We took him to restaurants. You know, Tammy made his life so so good. You know, sure. he, he begged me to get him out of out of the out of the home, and he always ate good. Had you know great things, and he was very very content. You know, he really was. He loved the cat. He loved the dog. Mm -hmm. We had animals that that always excited him. He loved mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stop him from feeding the dog. He always wanted to feed yeah, the, the dog. dog. What are you giving the dog? Now? <laughs> well, Vicky will identify no, with that. Vicky like has, him. Vicky has what? Three of them, Vicky. You have three yeah. dogs. Yeah. What kind, There's, Vicky? They're Chewinies. They're mean little. Chewinies. Oh. <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> Nobody's getting in my house. I'll just put it that way. Oh, they're crazy. I I I have a Chihuahua that I. I I have uh, inherited from an ex-girlfriend, and I've had it for over 13 years now. She's 17 years old. Oh my god! And so is Tammy's dog. So is Tammy's dog, Foofy, who's the sweetest. Yeah, he loves Foofy. Yeah, Foofy is you can't believe she's a Maltese. So that's Maltese, Maltese, yeah, a little seven pound. Seven pound Maltese. Wow. wow. And uh, I have a Chihuahua named Dallas. Who, gosh, she's she's the greatest. So I I, I hear you. Yeah, they and, and, and the door? The, yeah, Chihuahua. <laughs> what did you say, Vicky? Did they let say that the again? They... No, no, she <laughs> will bark. I put her in the next room, totally mellow all day until somebody she doesn't know. She will just bark, 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 crazy. I'm like, and I tell everybody how great she is. 
but when you meet her at first until you feed her and get to know her a little bit, then she warms up and does a little crab dance, spins around when she sees you, but it's very few and far between the people she does that for, you know, otherwise she just barks and barks. It's, it's, it's crazy. Put her in the next room. She's barking through the door when she hears someone else's voice nonstop. Oh, like, we, we also have to mention how his very good friend of 60 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that... Howie, Zach Norman, my uncle. But yeah, Zach. Yes. Zach is, you know, he, he's, 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 he's beyond words, Zach, the friendship that they had. Very, very good friendship. And, very uh, close. He's 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 actually releasing his old movie with my mom in it called Chief Zabu. It relates to it's almost like a, a, a story the way Chief Zabu takes over and the, the whole political thing of it. And he's had some success with it. He's been traveling to, to colleges and stuff with it. He's great. He's fantastic. He's talented. He's 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 been in. He was in a movie. uh Jaglum's movie Festival at Con. Do you guys ever see it? No, uh, it doesn't ring a bell. It's you. You got it. You got to watch it. It's it's it's. You know, whatever you th this What's movie really again? works, and he's got. What was that? Festival at Con. Festival at Con, and the other one was Chief Zabu. Okay. I think he may have changed the name again. But look up Chief Zabu, and it'll, it'll it'll come up where you know he's playing. He just played it in L.A. a while back in Santa Monica theaters, and it, it got uh, good response. You know how we how we might have been doing some interviews with your dad. He he might have been putting something together. Maybe I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They but spent uh, a lot of lot of time on the phone. They'd get together for dinners. They talked almost every day. Yeah. Actually, the day I was born, after everything happened, he went to the racetrack with Howie. That's how long <laughs> I know Howie. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet he picked a winner. I'll bet he picked a winner. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's for sure. Um, I, I got, I got one uh, more quick – I got one more quickie uh, regarding shadows. Did your father ever tell you – about how he got the job because, you know, there was another actor, uh, Jimmy Hall, uh, who was the first Willie Loomis, and he was on for a few episodes. Right. And then, and oh, father, that's funny. Yeah, you tell, I don't even, I, now that you're saying it, I remember, but I, I, I wouldn't, that's funny. Yeah, I remember this. Your pop, apparently, I, I see from the research that your father was actually going to move to California when he got the call. Uh, do you know anything yes. about Yes, yes. Talk, tell us yeah, that. he was. He was moving. He was going to, we came back three, we crossed country three or four times, three times, back and forth to California, back to New York, back and back. And, uh, you know, I was so young, I, I wasn't really sure what was going on. Mm -hmm. But um, now that you say that, uh, yeah, I, I, I uh, they actually, you know, he told, he, they, they wanted him for the part. They actually called him without a reading, believe it or not. Yeah, I heard. This is a, yeah, they, you know, they'd seen him somewhere on something, you know, and uh, they wanted him for the part. So I don't know why the other guy was dismissed. How was Jimmy Hall, by the way? Was he's he good? Doing, he's doing fine. Uh, I actually do talk with him. Uh, he's in. He's Cal still alive? Oh, that's sure great. Is. Jimmy Hall. That's great. Did you ever meet him? I don't know if you ever met him. I don't think you. I don't, I think don't you. think so. No, I no. don't think. He Did he go to the Shadow Ponds? No, no, no. Uh, I no. I ran into him by accident. He's doing uh, just for the just for the fans. No, he's doing well. He's living in California, and uh, he's in he's enjoying his retirement. Uh, but um, it was uh, but. The you know the, the scuttlebutt was is that your father was able to bring something to the role that they were looking for, and uh, right. this was yeah, essentially yeah. why. And they liked his obviously they liked his background, uh, you know, uh, for that. But um, I got one question, for, uh, one quick one before I hand it back to you guys. Uh, 
Adam, what do you have to say to the fans? Yes. Uh, for, you know. Well, I just, uh, the, the, he, I can't say thank you enough. I mean, you know, all the letters, you know, everybody reaching out saying just beautiful things. I mean, it's, it's, it's really fantastic. My dad, he, sometimes he didn't seem like he appreciated it. Just like everything he gets into a mood, but he, let me tell you, he really appreciated it beyond imagination. He, he loved it. He loved it. Yeah. He was loved that. And um, he yeah, loved so, the fans yeah, loved him. He, 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 he would say thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's quite a, I mean, I'm just thinking how big dark shadows. I mean, I, I didn't really understand the fame of it back then until I got older. I mean, Johnny Depp does a movie about dark shadows with Tim Burton. I mean, how crazy is that? That of, of a 60s soap opera. Crazy. All right. yeah. You guys ever see the movie? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know what to think of I it. I caught though. 10 minutes of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You saw, no, it, it you saw the first like 10 minutes, it. you caught the best of it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's yeah. true, Keith. You know, you know, you have no idea how true that is because, <laughs> you know, and then of course, now there's a portion of the fandom that loves that movie. So I don't want to start getting, I don't want to start stepping on Right. Yeah. 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 I think I'll off that on the time. <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. It seems that you what said I, it. <laughs> but I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. What were you going to say? I, it seemed very over the top, campy, more comedy. What I saw of it, and uh, I saw a scene at the table or something, and it di- it didn't pull me in right away. I, I should watch it again and give it a chance. I mean, Johnny Depp is great, and. Uh, so I, I should give it a chance. Although I did not like the remake of Willy Wonka. <laughs> no, I did <laughs> One not. Of the greatest. And interesting, it's oh funny you mention that. It's funny you mention that because Denise Nickerson, who played Violet in Willy in the original Willy Wonka, was also a Dark Shadows uh, star uh, later on in the in sixty eight, sixty nine. Oh, that's funny. She played Amy Jennings. Uh, and then later on, Nora Collins, and of course the fans were saying, the new fans were saying, "Who the heck are they?" Well, watch the show, and you'll find, and you'll find out. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, the um... yeah, it didn't capture the magic that they had in Ed Wood. Now Ed Wood was great. Oh yeah, Ed, oh yeah, oh god, it was fantastic. It was really good. And uh, think, Martin Landau, my God, he I clapped really when he when he won the Academy cool. Award for that. I got up on my feet and clapped, and they, you know, and oh people, yeah, you know, I mean, Eddie, Eddie, I love you, Eddie, Eddie, and that's good. <laughs> that's a good imitation, Eddie, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie. I love it. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, he 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 was he was he was good. He was good. Now, the, what Keith was uh, saying yeah, about the first, ten, the first ten minutes of the uh, Depp movie were were, pro- were were probably the best in terms of the origin, going back to 1795 and how Colin movie was built. Right. Oh, and that's that, good. And that was Please that was because the original writer, well, he was thrown. The original writer was thrown out. He had a much more serious take on it, which was closer to Dark Shadows, and he was thrown out. But they kept that particular. Uh, vignette or whatever it was. They kept those scenes in the, in the final movie. Anyway. Well, you know, you know, the actor that played Willie Loomis, you know what his first big role was, right? You mean, you're talking about the, uh, the tough Hall? kid. I can't think. Did he no, 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 no. In, in, uh, in the, in, in the remake of dark shadows. Oh, he, he was, the, he was, he was the tough kid in the bad news bears with Walter Matthau. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guy who played Willie. Yeah, I, I was actually happy to see him play it because I, you know, and he did something else that was really good before he was that. Good for that part. Gosh, I can't think of his name. That's gonna drive me nuts. I'm gonna have to look it up now. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it get his name. I can he, see his. I can he, see. He his, deserves a. He I can deserves see a big him. Bump. I can see his picture. I can see him in my mind actually. Uh, the tough kid. I think he played the tough kid. Uh, yeah, he played the tough was, kid. It was a pitcher that was that that uh, was with Tatum O'Neill in it. Exactly, ja- Jackie Earl Haley. Kind of a couple. What is it, Keith? Jackie Earl Haley. 
Jackie yeah. Earl Haley. That's the name. Jackie yeah. Earl Haley. There you yeah. go. He there also went go. on to play yeah. Freddy Krueger in the reboot. Did really? Really? Yeah. Right. The, wow. And he and he also did oh, um, yeah, that he comic did. the comic book movie as well, The Watchmen. He's in that as well. As you can see, Keith's well, well, when I did the Freddy when I did the Freddy's show. Nightmares, they got the real Freddy Krueger, which was funny. They 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 inter they had the real guy. So he played Freddy Krueger in the in the in the later movies. Yeah. In the reboot, yeah, they did a reboot of it. Wow, so. wow, oh, that's funny. interesting. So you met the original Freddy. He's a nice. He's totally different than what you expect, doesn't he? He's quite a nice. Oh yeah, completely, kind of completely. <laughs> well, I think a yeah. lot of them are like and, that. And the guy. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Adam. guy that directed, uh, the guy that directed me in that had directed my dad in a movie of the week by chance. I can't, I can't think of his name. I can't remember his name. Really, really good dude. But, um, yeah. That's it. He did play in The Watchmen. That was a You guys question. got more? Yeah, he was in The Watchmen. Yeah, I got, um, actually got two questions and then we're going to wrap it up and that way we'll get, let you get back to your life in this pandemic time. <laughs> I don't know, anything you want. <laughs> Although I've enjoyed this, I'll tell you that much. I, uh, we, we, I think we all wow, have. It's great. Go ahead, Keith. One of mine is a personal question, basically. As your father, after Dark Shadows, did so many iconic TV series, and as we are the same age, that's why I know they're iconic TV series, because these are things that we grew up on. Stuff like Kojak, Shazam, right. Manix. Exactly. Charlie Shazam, Jr. that was funny. I remember <laughs> I was excited when he got Shazam, I must admit. <laughs> but like Marty B. Jones, The Rockford Files, Lou Grant, this is like this is like the television Marty of my childhood. Jones. What was it like going to school and having your father appear in these TV shows that all the you know? Because we, used to, I know when I was oh like, yeah, all the kids. I mean that's all, I saw your dad. That's all I used to hear. I saw your dad on this. I saw your dad on that. Yeah, it, it, it was good. It was fun. And my dad, you know, I was a very good baseball player and all through that and and the, all the kids you know they love my dad you know he used to take us all out to lunch the whole team and stuff and it, it was just good memories the good memories i remember the only thing you know i take that back the only thing he owned in that whole time he when it got picked up after the emmy he got a jaguar uh -huh. and he and he bought it in cash and one day we're where he, he's taken all my friends out to Damon's, the big steakhouse out here before they changed it. It was an old school. I mean, every Marilyn Monroe used to live in Glendale and be friends with Casey Stengel, who's the baseball oh. field I played at. So sure. she would always go to Damon's in Glendale. And it, it, you looked at it and it was you know, the old style California with the old palm tree things that, that just Hawaiian vibe just done so perfectly. Anyway, we were going to lunch there and uh, one of my buddies, he, 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 Greg, I remember Carlos Calvo, he was Costa Rica. He says, Mr. Carlin, on the back of the car, it's a brand new car. He says, uh, it's, 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 it's a little bit, coming off i don't know it shouldn't be glued like that and it runs the whole length of the car <laughs> and my dad just grabs the end of it and tears the whole thing off and everybody couldn't believe he did it because he's just like ruining a new car they're thinking and then everybody just started laughing hysterically we and they still mention it to him. remember your dad tore that off the jag <laughs> you know, nobody had a jag in those days and uh, they all get a big kick out of that. It was funny. It was funny. But that's the way he was. You know, he didn't care much about stuff like that. What's your favorite Well, I guess a little bit, or else he wouldn't have gotten it. My dad throwing the football on the – I'll tell you, he, this man could have been a professional quarterback. He could stick the football 50 yards sidearm and drop it in me at full speed and just – spiral it right into my hands it was impossible unbelievable i'm a good athlete i could be a decent quarterback but he had a touch that was unbelievable i mean beyond professional quarterback status i mean he was that good he could just and i'd run on the beach or the santa monica pier 
and we would just play football all the time, you know, I'd just be get, get some great wind sprints in and it, it was fun. Yeah. We, we had it. And then we would go to Ivy at the shore for lunch and, uh, have some main muscles with some pasta. Wow. And, uh, that's, 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 yeah, it was great. It was great. Wow. We had great times together. We always took long walks last part of his life. He lived in downtown LA before, before Tammy was taking care of him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a little place in little Tokyo and we always used to go to great steakhouses down there and walk downtown LA and downtown LA. I never gave it credit. It is very reminiscent of New York in certain places. And I found out many of the same builders and architects did the same buildings down there. I mean, it, you go to a, you go to a, a restaurant called church and state in downtown LA, it feels more like New York than New York. It's so it's in a, it's in a building called the biscuit building mm-hmm. built in 1927, not even that old, but the same year, the empire state building was built. Wow. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, 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 we had some great, great walks in downtown L.A. They Amazing. Those old hotels all through it. too. All that old architecture. Oh yeah. Some of those hotels. Yeah, are really it, may, cool. it really. Exactly, and there was an old uh, neon light we saw one yes. night on an old building, and it was from it was 1910, and it said 10 cents a dance," yeah. <laughs> and it was completely original it was wow. unbelievable wow yeah they got some real i mean you you really check out downtown la it's something else it really is you got to kind of dive into it and see it but it's it's something else. lara parker on her web, on her website when after he passed talked about the talked about him and uh her reminiscences at one point they tried to set him up in brooklyn or something like that because he he wanted to go back to his roots and uh, I don't know if you know if, if, if you're familiar with it, but I'm I'm glad that he went back. Yeah, to we, we, I'm glad. Go ahead. Um, yeah. One thing I yeah, want to yeah. let our fans know because um, our podcast we, we do other stuff besides Dark Shadows. We actually do a lot of <laughs> horror films, and the episode that you did for well, I, I felt I felt very special. I thought I was the only guy on this. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that you done, you did, it's, it's a, miser- a miserable life is the episode that you did for Freddy's Nightmare. And so for our horror fans, right, out, right. Um, Adam actually worked with Lars Parker Lincoln from Friday the 13th films. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And the um, Tony Award winning writer, director, and film producer, and film director. Michael, John, John Michael Cameron. Thomas. Precisely, Who John Cameron. Do? Yeah, he. What it, we became, we became very good friends on the set. And one of the biggest mistakes in my life, you know, I I just could never put it together. I was you know, a lot like my dad. We get, I get on an airplane flying back to New York about probably three years after I did that, and I sit down, and it's John Cameron sitting right next to me. And we just started laughing and he, and he offers me, he says, come down to my uh, theater company I have there. And I meant to do it and I never did. I had a girlfriend there and I just kind of faded into, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, it was a really dumb mistake of mine not to do that. What a great guy. What And what a talent. Oh my God. Hedwig and the Mighty Inch, the movie he did. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Jesus. And it's played Absol- it, to me it's absolutely all over the brilliant. world. Brilliant. So. Oh my gosh. And then and then the, the big actor took over, right? Yeah, on, on Neil Broadway. Patrick Harris did it. Yeah, Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris. Darren Christ is at it. In this country was- we've had some uh, we had um, Anthony Head, who is probably known as Giles as from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Right. He's done it over the year. It's gone all yeah. over the world. So it's, you know, it's a phenomenal. Wow. Yeah. He, he, he was a, he was a great dude. He was really a good dude. I'm so happy for his success and he, he deserves it. I mean, that, that movie was absolutely crazy off the wall, but really good. Mm-hmm. So, did well, you guys did, see the movie? Yes. I had big it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Actually, we are actually yeah. covering that next season. So <laughs> we're actually covering that. Oh, really? Yeah. We're, how is he today? How is he doing? 
He's doing fine. Um, he's um, well, he did Sharp Boss, which kind of um, was kind of controversial. It's a good film, but because of the um, extravagant sex scenes in Sharp Boss, his second feature up, it, it kind of um, set him back a little bit. But he is working on a new film at the moment. So, so tell we'll me the name of the movie that he did. He called, it was a film called Sharp Boss. Was actually showed. Um, um, the actors actually performed have real sex in the film called Sharp Bus about people's relationships and sexual relationships. And it was kind of oh, wow, risk, yeah. risque for like 2006. But it's one of those films that the critics right. really loved. It won a bunch of awards, but I'm pretty sure middle of America probably had a lot of problems with it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I know the Bible Belt probably did. <laughs> yeah, it probably did. But it's a really good, in Europe it did really, really well. But it's a really good film called Sharp Boss, and he directed that as well. So, and, um, and wow. I think he's, yeah, he, he's, he, he's, he's currently he's, working he's, on something new at the moment. I know that he's um, working on a film currently. So, because he's in the midst of that when. Um, good, good. When last Do you guys I, interview him at all? We will be, he's actually going to be doing our podcast sometime next year. So we're doing head. Uh, we're doing tell, tell, t- tell him Adam says hello. I will do. <laughs> and I'm, 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 gosh, I, I was so happy for him, man. He's, he's, he was a really good guy. We had some, we had laughs on the plane. It was just like, it was funny. I sit I, next to him right on the plane by crazy. I think he does a lot of work on the planes York. because um, the guy he wrote um, Hedwig with, he met him on the plane on a cross Atlantic um, flight as well. And basically they sat down next together. They came up with Hedwig and they wrote it together and it was from sitting on a plane. So that's that genius for you. That's wow. Yeah. Yeah. I can playing. see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, 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 he's, a, he's a great conversationalist. I'll tell you, he really is. Mm. He, he's, he's a good dude. Super bright. So what we'll do is we'll wrap this up. So I want to thank you, Adam, for joining the Literary License okay. Podcast. And thank, thank you, you guys. for doing the interview with us. So anyway, this is Umki saying goodnight from the Literary License Podcast. It's goodnight from Vicky. Say goodnight, Vicky. Good night, everybody. Good night, Jesse. Thank good night. you. Good night, Tom. Jesse speaks. Good, good night, all, and thank you once again. been a literary license podcast production if you cry for help there's no help for you